Good morning all, or at least it would be a good morning if this charge controller hadn't failed. I went outside and it was flashing away merrily, so it's still the microcontroller's still running, and it's measuring voltage at the battery side, this side. That's fine, but no current is getting through this side, so the MOSFET's not turning on. Now that could be a number of reasons. The high side driver might have packed up. The uh, charge pump, which generates the high voltage for that, might have packed up. Fact is, I've got to find out what went wrong. Well, it's fairly obvious what went wrong. Water's got in, that's what's gone wrong. And there are some signs of corrosion in here. Uh, that's felt pen that's smeared. But there are some pads that look a little bit corroded. So yeah, even the UV glue is not a perfect seal. So I think I'm going to have to um, go with my previous idea, which was to UV glue it and then also to seal in it inside some heat shrink with some hot glue uh, sealing ends. Anyway, I'm going to start scraping away this hot glue, if it will scrape away, and uh, see if I can work out what's actually failed on here. So I've scraped enough um, of this UV glue away to expose this resistor, which is the gate resistor, so the uh, connection I can get to is actually driving the gate of the MOSFET. So we can see whether there's uh, some PWM on there. Now, of course, if I connect this to a battery, uh, it's going to say the battery is under voltage and go to 100% PWM, which will at least give a, a voltage there of about 20 volts with respect to, to ground, 8 volts with respect to positive. Yeah, that should do it. So that's hooked up to battery. Uh, the LED is flashing. There it goes, 12 point something, 12 point about five, I think. And if I touch that point there, which goes to the MOSFET, now that should be MOSFET gate eight volts above positive, this red one. And it isn't, it's about 0.6 volts below. Let's look at the battery voltage, which is 12.6. And this is only getting up to 12. So at the moment, the gate of the MOSFET is 0.6 volts below its source. Well, that's definitely not going to turn it on. So that's why current is not uh, flowing from the solar panel into the battery. And that looks like a failure in the charge pump. Now I'm lifting the hot glue off here and it's just lifting off the solder resist. So all the greens coming away with the glue and you can see the ground plane shiny copper there i'm trying to get to this track um, which you can see let's get a pointer running out here to this transistor because that's the 20 volts or so from the charge pump just want to see if i'm getting that 20 volts so i'll just keep lifting this glue which is lifting quite easily. Whoops, that shot across the room. But um, yeah, taking all the solder resist off. And the verdict is, ah, 21.4 volts. So yes, the charge pump's running and presenting that voltage to that transistor, but that transistor's not switching on. So the problem is not in the generation of the voltage, the charge pump, it's in the high side driver, which is the uh, transistor switch, which applies that voltage to the gate of the MOSFET. Interesting. So 21 volts is on that transistor. Um, now, is it meter at the edge? I can't remember. But I've got 20 volts on the middle pin, if that's the collector. I've got a feeling that is the collector, actually. On a 2N3904 or 6. But over here, going to the MOSFET, I've only got 12 volts. So that looks like the high side driver is actually being told be off. So the output of the microcontroller, which presumably is high, can I see that? Uh, not sure I can get to that oh, unless it's there. No, that's 20 volts. Well, the fact is, something's gone wrong. It seems that base is the centre pin on these transistors, so let's just touch onto that. 
and that's coming straight out the microcontroller and that's 5 volts so the microcontroller is high which is saying turn that MOSFET on but the MOSFET's not turning on because its gate is only at 12 volts so yeah there's something wrong with the 3 transistor high side driver it's failed and I am guessing that's due to the rain getting in so I'm gonna have to make another one of these I think I can see a potential place where this failed if you look between the two transistors which are face to face it looks to me like there's a hole on the side there and you can see it best there just a little hole in the glue where it didn't quite work its way between those two transistors and I think you can see down into the unit and that that wasn't sealed at all the moisture just got in there and has either changed a resistance somewhere or it started to corrode it looks like looks to me like that wasn't sealed unless there was a pellet on the edge there that's pinged off but uh, if not yeah there's actually a hole there running right down inside the unit and that's probably where it failed and the right hand one of those two transistors that are facing each other does show a little bit of discoloration just down where the uh, 220k resistor approaches it just a little bit brown there I'm not sure if I can do the magnifying glass and the light oh yes you can see it there definitely some discoloration under there so I suspect maybe the water's eaten away into that transistor and that's why it's not doing what it's meant to do so I found this it's um, a partly assembled PWM5 through hole PCB so if I uh, continue the assembly of this build it up and uh, I'll need to cut some new wires and attach wires to it because if I cut these off here they're going to be too short but I've got new wires actually I might cut these off so I don't have to remake the MC4s if I cut those off there and resolder them on here that uh, should be fine but I'll put new wires on and new terminals for the battery end yeah I'm gonna start making that one up I think and then when I hot glue uh, when I UV glue it I pay particular attention to getting UV glue down between these two transistors I'm sure it'll find its way in somewhere else the point is I've only got heat shrink which fitted the old square type PWM5 and it's not long enough to encompass this and what I've been meaning to do is buy some heat shrink which is the next diameter down I can't quite remember what it should be maybe one inch because remember it's one inch diameter and this is one inch wide so when it's flattened it should easily encompass this uh, but also cut sufficiently long that I can put in my hot glue slugs in each end I'm going to order some of that and uh, just getting some 1N4 and 48 diodes it's uh, rotten timing really because today is actually a really sunny day so I mean I could connect the solar panel directly to the battery but that means finding connectors and stuff uh, so yeah I'm missing out on a good charge session of my big three lead acid batteries let's solder these diodes in there are five 1N4148 diodes get them in and I'll put the tantalums in as well got some tantalums there I can't think what to say I've just discovered that all the wire cutoffs are magnetic now that's the tantalum capacitors and the 1N4148 diodes yeah they've all got steel legs so maybe I get a bit carried away about this copper leg business and buying all these expensive copper leg resistors when all my other components are steel so I was a little bit hasty with the UV glue and I've put UV glue on a little earlier than I perhaps should have done and unfortunately two things have happened it's covered over the uh, or part of the programming header so I now can't program the chip well I probably could if I scraped the glue away but these are pre-programmed anyway 
I think it's uh, this slightly earlier firmware version, but it doesn't matter, it's much the same. But it also partially covered this 4K7 resistor, which I don't have, which is a bit of a problem. So what I've done is I've soldered a little surface mount one on the back, which, yes, you're going to have a job seeing that, aren't you? So let's go into zoom, I mean macro mode. And there's a 472, which I've soldered to one of the pads and then a little piece of wire uh, to the other side of that. So that's those issues solved. Uh, I still need to put the two black wires on and that's about it really. I just need to put the wires on. I'm going to put them on the legs of the MOSFET this time. I've left them on, put a little bit of uh, solder blobs on there and then that's ready to go. And probably what I'll do is put it back out in the garden just with the UV glue until I get my uh, heat shrink and then when that arrives I'll dry it off add the heat shrink to it and put the hot glue ends on but on this one when I was UV gluing it I did pay special attention to these transistors and tried to get the glue in between them and not have that little hole like I had before and all around the IC as well, tried to get in all around it so that there are no areas left exposed. And I think I've managed it. There's a few bubbles between those two blue capacitors, but yeah, I think all the metallic stuff's covered. So I'll get the wires on it and then I'll need some more UV glue. I think I might have run out. But I also think I've got an envelope somewhere with some new UV glue in, so that might have to be a post bag. So I've got my uh, MC4s on that end. They were cut off the old charge controller. On the other end, I've put new wires on uh, because I was concerned that if I cut these off, because they run quite a way up here, they might be a bit short to span across the battery because it's a, quite a wide battery. Uh, this is partly uh, UV glued, but I'm just going to put these um, terminals on the end of these wires now, then try and find some more UV glue. I've actually bought a 50ml bottle of that UV glue because it's such useful stuff uh, that I thought I'd get more of it. And I've made myself a new little sponge which sort of fits that, but not really. I wonder if this will work. Uh, these things are from these blue coloured butt join connectors for automobiles uh, where you put a wire in each end. Now this would have had a blue piece of heat shrink around it but I cut that off and I use these to connect wires on the old charge controller. Now that fits beautifully down the barrel of that as long as I don't get any excess solder on there and then I could either solder that which might be tricky or crimp it. But if I solder that onto there first, I shouldn't have the problem of a very small wire fitting a very large aperture terminal. So these are soldered onto here. Now, how do I attach them into here? I pre-stretched the uh, heat shrink because it was a bit small. Uh, so that fits in there. And then I've got these pliers. So I think I'm gonna have to crimp that there. And that just means pressing down really very hard on that. Yeah, that seems to have crimped up nicely. What sort of connection that'll make and how long it'll last is anybody's guess. Put the heat shrink on there and get the heat gun on it. Good. Right, I suppose I ought to test this now. Uh, although I've come quite far with this thing. So let's put this on the battery. Uh, positive on that side. I haven't got my uh, little clips on here, but let's just give it a go. And it should flash out the voltage. And it's not, probably because this is the old firmware and there is an LED disable mode. Uh, no, that disables it. That should re-enable it. Sometimes it takes quite a long time for that flashing sequence to get going. J 
during which time one worries and says, Have I got something wrong? <laughs> What's it doing? Right, it's working now. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. Twelve point five. Now, to charge this battery, I need to interface this to MC4's. A little bit tricky, but I think I might be able to just shove some wires down with this thing. Let's give that a go. Well, it works. It's modulating at 13.5 volts. It's just that this battery was at 12.4 or something, and it shot up to 13.5 very quickly. So I don't know, maybe it was fully charged, but the voltage had just settled down over a very long period of time. But yeah, that got there rather alarmingly quickly. And if you're wondering how I connected this, um, that is a banana plug insert because the MC4 is a four millimetre. Uh, this one has a pin, so I put a crock clip on it. I took the crock clip off my DMM where the probe fits in there and that wire's just pushed in there. That's how I did it. Uh, UV glue, allegedly, although I don't recognize the feel of the packaging. So is this UV glue in a new... Oh no, it's a standard thing, but just in a strange box. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, okay, it's just the refill insert, which is all I wanted. You don't get the little torch bit. Perfect, let's get some more UV glue on there. So I'm basically using the whole of this UV glue tube up. Shouldn't shine the UV on there, I suppose. And while I'm UV shining UV light on this, I'm actually looking through my phone camera so that I know I'm looking at <laughs> the UV light on the screen of the camera, which presumably can't damage my eyes. And the actual item is hidden behind the camera. So I can see what I'm doing. I can see the UV light, but it's not UV at the point where it enters my eyes. So yeah, I'm just using up the entire tube, mounding this up in layers. And I read a professional UV gluing website, which said that building this stuff up in layers is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. And may be necessary if, you know, your topology requires it. Okay, that's the top done. So I've bought the one inch, oh, shouldn't put my fingers in while I'm doing the UV, the one inch diameter clear heat shrink from a UK seller, so that should turn up fairly quickly. I just need to locate my glue sticks and then I can put the outer shielding on this. But I am going to put this outside because it's a moderately sunny day again today and I want to get those batteries charged up out there. Um, and then when the, uh, when the uh, clear heat shrink arrives and the uh, hot glue is located, I'll make the outer covering of this thing. Assuming I can still get the heat shrink, yeah, I can put it over this end with these terminals. I don't think it'll go over the MC4 end now because those connectors are too fat. And there it is in place and we've got a little bit of sun. Let's see if we see that flashing LED. I think it was up to 13 which is a very good sign because this was down to 12.4 as well one two three yeah 13 volts and then the next thing I want to do is check with this so let's switch it on to the 40 amps range uh, I shouldn't need to reset the relative because I'm measuring a much higher current this time clamp it on and yeah we've got three amps three amps in sunshine so that seems to have fixed it so very pleased emergency repair of uh, my battery charging system in fact, let's go right out with the three big batteries and the three solar panels finished cheerio